Today, I'll talk about an important problem in India, the fellowship problem during the PhD. And it is one of the biggest problem amongst the PhD students. PhD, which is the highest qualification in the world, comes with many benefits. You are in the spotlight. You would be Dr. Yu within five years of time. But along with this fame, there are a lot of challenges. First of all, you have to have extended work hours. Lots of work. Question is how much money you are getting paid? Is it worth it? So people talk about research, people talk about other aspects, but one thing is really neglected, and that is the financial crisis. And in this video, we'll talk about what are the funding options or funding or fellowship opportunities during your PhD? How much is the fellowship? What are the problems regarding this fellowship amount and how to overcome these problems? So many of the cases, you cannot take a ch chance with your career that you don't do a PhD. Many times you want to do a PhD because you love research, you want to be a researcher, you love science. But this video is to educate you about the financial problems that one can possibly face during their PhD. Also, it would talk about how to overcome those problems. If you learn it from the beginning, at the end of the PhD, life would be a lot more easier. Believe me, I have tried it myself and recommending this to you guys. By the way, this video is sponsored by Unacademy, which is India's biggest online learning platform, which has uh, several courses for different entrance examinations, including GATE, ICMR, TIFR, JJ Bills. CSIR NAID, IIT JAM BT and all of these things. They have so they have educators throughout the in throughout India who would help you in your uh, preparation time. If you are worried about exam, an academy will get you covered. They have lectures, notes, doubt clearing sessions which would make your journey smooth. But right now there is a price hike from April 1st. So please beat the price hike and if you want a subscription, take it right now. This is the appropriate time to take subscription and only four days are left for this subscription. You can use my code AP10 to get additional 10% discount. So register right now. In order to register, you need to download the app. You can use the link which is provided in the description. So check the description box. You can use my code AP10 for the 10% discount and register right now. Okay, let's begin with our discussion part. What are the fund funding opportunities while you are doing PhD in India? So there are several funding bodies like CSIR, ICMR, Department of Biotechnology or DBT, Department of Science and Technology or DST, and Department of Atomic Energy, DAE. So all of these are uh, fellowship options. Apart from that, there is also um, MHRD fellowship and that is dedicated for PhDs in ISAR and NISAR, all of these things. So all of these are funding agencies that fund your PhD or that fund your fellowship during your PhD. So you cannot get all of these at once. You can avail only one of the fellowship. So the net amount of fellowship is same for all of them. So the basic scale is same for all of them. Then what's the problem? But before understanding that, let's talk about the amount of the fellowship. So if we talk about a JRF level fellowship, it's 31,000 and uh, you can have uh, like HRA of 7,400 and if you are a SRF, it would be 35,000 with a S uh, uh, HRA of uh, 8,400. So this is your overall uh, PhD salary, be it. So this is very uh, uh, gross kind of like calculation. But if you are a PMRF fellowship, which is dedicated for some students, selected students in IIT or IIC, your fellowship might be better, like 80,000. So it can go up till 80,000. Average is like 45,000 with HRA, but it's kind of the high salary is like 80,000, not beyond that. So you must be wondering, the numbers look pretty promising, nice. So what's the problem with it? So the problem is the following. First of all, you might not afford a healthy lifestyle with the given amount of money. Question is whether it is possible for you to afford a lifestyle. So let's compare that part. So cost of living in different cities in India is very different. Question is where your PhD institute is located. Let's say 
we take some example of housing rent if your phd institute is in mumbai you are in big danger because you have 42000 rupees as average rent just to rent a studio apartment you have to pay that much amount of money and if your salary is 45000 total including hra how you are going to afford that think about a person who is doing phd in kolkata versus phd in mumbai obviously people who is doing in phd in kolkata will save a lot of money in terms of rent right so there is a inequality in all of these uh, cost of living in different cities but the payment is not scaled up accordingly and that's why there is a problem so the merit of the student living in kolkata or mumbai might be equal but one is getting depressed because they can hardly afford their rent and afford other amenities while the other person is affording all of that so even if your phd program comes with housing let's let us assume that phd program comes with a affordable housing quality housing and that is provided throughout india and throughout india it is equal let's uh, let us assume that part even after that the amenities for example the cost of a movie cost of a dinner cost transportation cost or cost of a let's say a fitness center all of these things is again different in different cities so obviously things are way costly in many cities than others so there is a huge heterogeneity in terms of phd fellowship and this is not that big problem this is only the first layer of the problem the second layer of problem is like many fine funding institutes for example csir and other funding institutes allocate the fellowship so there is no problem in the allocation of the fellowship but the problem is the release of the fellowship many a times the fellowship release is delayed and that's why you might end up getting no fellowship for 4 months and then getting the fellowship one time later on but imagine you might need a new laptop and that cost let's say as 80000 rupees without fellowship for 4 months how can you buy that and that might be super important for your phd work and that is the big problem with the fellowship release so the fellowship release frequency is irregular and that is the biggest problem maybe you have some medical emergency who knows and in that time if you don't have money and there is no fixed income source which is filling up your pocket imagine how painful that is now the question is how to overcome this problem i have a video on that that how you can like manage your finances during your phd or higher studies but financial planning is crucial so there are many ways by which you can earn some extra money obviously fd and rd are not really good options but you can you should have some of that but you can invest in mutual funds from the beginning of your phd you can invest in stocks you can also start doing freelancing as a phd you would earn many skills maybe teaching skill presentation skills maybe many other skills writing skills you can use that for freelancing and earn some money for example i'll share my experiences with you i do a lot of freelancing in terms of teaching uh, presentations also like scientific writing and all of these part so that gives me some extra money that can thrive me throughout the month and it can help me to fulfill my other needs beyond my phd fellowship so all these things that can lead to depression are really a big problem in phd like first of all there is academic pressure you would always always feel you might be worthless you are a loser maybe you want to quit you are useless but along with it imagine if fellowship problem is in your head then how big problem your life is so that's why all of these things are leading to huge depression in the phd student community in india people are not really vocal about this but i think it's time to like be really vocal and try to understand this is the inherent problem in the system and wh while we don't have a immediate solution but we can still gear up ourselves such that we don't fail into this problem so when there is financial crisis how even you can think of starting a family or supporting your fam existing family right so this is a big problem in the end of your phd you are gr grown up and you would be like 27 29 maybe so at that time it's time to start your own family or you have to support your parents how would you do that with such a financial crisis so for that i have a individual video how you can earn extra money without compromising your phd
I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.